Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is your weekend edition, yes? So this is going to be a reading for uh, Friday, May 17th through Sunday, May 19th, yes? Um, and because we have a full moon this weekend, we are going to be doing a full moon in Scorpio reading for the weekend. The full moon is tomorrow or Saturday, the 18th. Um, and I did do a full moon in Scorpio reading in terms of how it's going to affect um, relationships or love connections or whatnot last night over on Instagram. It's an Instagram live video. So if you haven't connected with me there, go ahead and check that out. You might want to go check that out. So I'm going to do a full moon reading here, but it's just going to be a general reading. Okay. It's not going to be really, be really centrally focused on love. Although love most likely is going to come up, um, just to, you know, just as a head start, I did a little, I was doing a little bit of a pre-shuffle, just, you know, generating the energies, trying to collect them a little bit. And the page of cup, no, yeah, the page of cups came out and right underneath the deck was that Scorpio energy in the king of cups. Yeah. So love is most likely going to come up. Um, it, that pre-shuffle, the page of cups with the king of cups, there's an energy, it, it's the page of cups is the dreamer, king of cups is Scorpio energy, um, but it's a masculine energy, someone that's very um, in tune with their emotions, very honest with themselves about their emotions and honest with others about their emotions, someone that's not afraid to take um, action in form of, you know, what their heart says and it, where their emotions are emotional maturity as well there could be an energy in which someone may want to reconcile someone may want to you know send an apology there could also be you know little love notes here or there um but then also as i was continuing the pre-shuffle the seven of swords popped out um there's something that's going on underneath the surface that someone really just is not aware of or someone's not consciously being made aware of. You might be aware of it. You might be intuitively tapping into it. Now, I'm not necessarily feeling that this is really anything all that bad. It's just a matter of it's not it's not being shown consciously. Maybe someone has feelings that someone is not really... Someone has feelings for someone else that they're not completely being honest about or are really portraying or expressing that could change though let's see what we get here um, but keep in mind guys that time is an illusion and energies are fluid okay and the the full moon energies don't just last this weekend okay they're going to be they're gonna you're gonna probably be experiencing them throughout the week, all right? So just because we're talking about the full moon this weekend, which is happening technically on Saturday the 18th, um, this is something you really could be experiencing going through, you know, throughout the week as the full moon energies subside, okay? So let's just get right into it, guys. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the weekend of May 17th through the 19th. Please give us an accurate represent, uh, representation and some clarity and understanding as to what this full moon in Scorpio means for the collective. What could we be experiencing? What can we be made aware of to look out for this that and the other thank you so much spirit Ooh, it's so crazy. The, the the deck, so I was specifically channeling full moon in Scorpio energy. Oh, look, there's that page of cups again. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Um, as I was channeling the energies, the deck turned like this white 
glow as if it was like the moon. It was really kind of cool. Let's see what we get. Let me give this a few shuffles here. All right, guys, full moon in Scorpio for your weekend edition. Full moon in Scorpio, May 2019. Oh, 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 that didn't work so well. Let's try that again. May 2019, full moon in Scorpio. What's going on? Okay, I'm going to give this one more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got. In Scorpio. All right. All righty, kids. Let's see what we've got for this weekend edition. Full moon in Scorpio. Best messages, please, spirit. For the collective. So that Two of Swords is out again. There is, in fact, a hefty deal of indecisiveness here. Has been for some time. You have the Three of Cups. Celebration, union. Um, the union of body, mind, and spirit. You have the Two of Swords with the Ten of Wands. Now, the Two of Swords has been coming out quite a bit. I feel like um, someone may have been indecisive about something because of burdens. There is a slight energy of, re of releasing burdens that have been holding someone in an indecisive state, indecisive frame of mind. Now, keep in mind that full moons are a perfect time for releasing something that no longer serves you well in this case releasing the burden i do feel like there is an energy of indecisiveness being left behind because when it came out the two of swords like flew over way all the way to the other side of the table so i feel like there is some sort of rejection of those energies okay oof the devil, the knight of pentacles, but with the ace of wands. That's very, very interesting. Um, you know, this feels really good, even though this devil card here is showing itself again. But I feel like what's happening here is slowly but surely, someone is facing their fears around a situation in which they are very, very inspired towards, feeling very sprung. Um, I do, I just feel like this is someone overcoming some major obstacle or some major fear. Because I do feel like the devil and the ten of wands energy here um, go hand in hand together. It's almost as if someone is choosing to continue to carry these burdens for fear of something for fear of some sort of change, maybe, um, attachment to a certain circumstance or a certain outcome. I do, I really do feel or see someone facing a great deal of fears here and being able to release them. Mm-hmm. Now, you could either be inspired to move in a new direction already, which could be helping you or furthermore inspiring you towards facing your fears, doing some sort of work to clear them away, or there's something that could happen that catalyzes you facing these fears. Now, also, the advice could be that you need to do it because you're in this indecisive state and you're carrying all these burdens. And for some of you, it's like you don't know which to let go of. You're indecisive because you just don't know what to do. You can't decide. Well, obviously you're indecisive. Um, <laughs> um, 
But it's like there are so many different options here. I feel like someone may have been in a frame of mind where there was some sort of procrastination. which only really delayed your progress. But this really could be a good time. I mean, Scorpio, first of all, it's a full moon, okay? Second of all, it's in Scorpio. And Scorpio is a, a sign of death, right? Transformation or uh, change. This is a really powerful moment. I, I, you know, to be quite honest, this full moon, if you want to face your fears, I would say this is one of the best ones to do it during. And it just feels also, it just kind of feels like it's going to happen naturally. It's not something that you really have to push, you know? Push for or strive for. It can... The chances of it happening organically are much higher now just because of the nature of this full moon, the nature of the Scorpio energy, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get some clarification here. We're going to start with the Ten of Wands and the Two of Swords. Let's clarify this, um, these burdens, this indecisiveness. Honestly, this is what I feel like you're going to be facing here. Like, this is the central focus, especially if you've been in very indecisive about something lately. I hope I'm conveying this correctly because I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble putting it into words, but it's literally these Ten of Wands, this Ten of Wands energy that's causing some sort of delay, is causing some sort of indecisiveness. And now it could be because of these, these burdens in this Ten of Wands that you are unable to see. You may not necessarily be indecisive just because you are refusing to make a decision. You might just, your, your vision may just be so clouded with all of these different things that you're carrying, these responsibilities, these belief systems, these, these ways of identifying yourself, ways of identifying a certain situation, whatnot, whatever. That could be causing you not to be able to see not to be able to choose but it's still you're choosing whether or not you want to carry these things so ultimately if you're still choosing to carry these burdens and it's getting in your way well it's your choice to release that just like it's your choice to carry it to begin with right now i just caught the five of cups in my mind, I, I just caught, yep, and then there's the Knight of Pentacles again. Um, it's going to be a process. For some of you, it's going to be slow and set it's steady, but there's definitely some release that needs to happen. Let's just go ahead and clarify this ten. The Ten of Wands with the Two of Swords, please. Just some clarity, please, Spirit. Ten of Wands and the Two of Swords. That's it, okay. The Emperor, wow. <laughs> oh, shit. With the King of Pentacles. So check it out. Um, you know, what this is saying to me, at least what the Emperor is saying to me, is the Emperor is screaming, take your power back. Like, decide for yourself what it is you want to carry, what it is you want to to carry, yeah. Be the master of your own domain. Now, here's the other thing. Because you between the emperor and the king of pentacles, you have 
strong commitment energy. But for some of you, this is a situation in which you feel obligated to carry these circumstances. But really, that obligation only falls on you if you deem it so. And in some cases, yes, you have obligations that, you know, you commitments that you've made that you need to honor. But even in that case, if the commitment that you have made, number one, no longer serves you, no longer serves those, uh, the others who have been involved, um, is no longer beneficial in a healthy way, um, is abusive, is destructive, and whatnot, whatever. Or even if it just has plain out, plain turn out to be not what you thought it would be or not what you expected, and you no longer wish to carry that burden, you by no means are really required to continue to do so. Now, granted, in the practical sense of the things, say you signed a contract with someone or something, now you have to finish out that contract or face penalties. Okay, sure. But you still have the choice to break that contract if you choose. If it would be beneficial, if you like say you're cutting your losses here. Does that make sense? I mean, you're in control, period. No one else is in control for you unless you allow them to be in control for you. Now, this is, I do want to say this is kind of a good thing because, you know, someone is showing commitment here but and, and allegiance, alliance, but is that really well spent? That is something that you need to ask yourself here because it's if it's keeping you from being from making a decision, moving in a direction that you really truly want to be moving into, how beneficial is it really to be carrying these burdens? But ultimately what I am seeing here is someone really stepping up, taking their power back and doing what is right for them. Now this could be financial in nature as well with the King of Pentacles here. Okay, let's get into the second row. Facing the devil, facing your fears to slowly but surely move in a direction that you are inspired to move in. Damn, there's the Ace of Wands again, just as I was saying that. And the Chariot, wow, 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 wow. And the Knight of Pentacles. So the Ace of Wands and the Knight of Pentacles came out to clarify themselves. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. You guys. You guys. The, the three cards. The Devil. The Fool. Ace of Wands and the Chariot. So the Devil, <laughs> the Knight of Pentacles... And the Ace of Wands all came out to clarify themselves. <laughs> That's really freaking hilarious. That is really freaking hilarious. Um, okay, so check it out, though. It is some form of heartbreak that has created this attachment to the devil, that has created the carrying of these burdens here. Burdens that are no longer yours to carry. Quite honestly, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of who, what these burdens represent, what not, whatever, they, do, they belong to the devil. They don't belong to you. They don't. They straight up just don't. For some of you, this is something that's from childhood that I'm picking up on. There's like some sort of childhood trauma that is really affecting you, right? That has been really affecting you throughout your life. And it may have been a subconscious situation in which you may have like completely forgot about it consciously, but it's still been playing out in the background. And now you have a chance to release it, to let go of it, and to heal yourself of it, okay? For others of you, this is just a heartbreaking situation. It could be, for some of you, it could be love in the past, um that has kind of burned you and you've been in this fearful state around it 
you may there, there there could be some sort of codependency which also could be an extension from childhood but i see that clearing up here okay because you have the three of swords yes which has created the initial wound in which the devil has been able to set up shop right but now you're moving in a completely different direction with the fool i mean obviously the fool is facing the devil here but what i'm seeing is just like this knight of pentacles is facing the devil in this situation here right in the the first pull you have the fool now facing the devil and the, both of them are kind of like literally facing the fear taking a leap of faith moving in a new direction a direction that you are very very passionate about sprung even okay ace of wands with the chariot and the chariot represents a balance of uh yes masculine and feminine energy also a balance of the emotions a balance of the light and the dark the good the bad the ugly the pretty uh, you know that <laughs> that kind of thing taking a new leap of faith and trusting yourself trusting the universe through this process that's really quite beautiful guys but this is a perfect time to do it. Full moon, number one, in Scorpio, number two. I mean, face your fears. Take a leap of faith. Uh, move in a new direction. Trust your intuition. It's really quite beautiful, guys. I like that a lot. Okay, so I'm going to close this reading with a card from the Light Worker Oracle. Alrighty, let's see what we've got here. Closing message. Closing message, please, spirit. Yeah, I don't know why, but in this Three of Swords energy, I'm specifically seeing childhood trauma. We don't have the Six of Cups or anything like that, but I'm specifically seeing childhood trauma here in that Three of Swords for some of you might be a majority of you maybe that's why it's coming through so strongly but that is a strong strong presence in that three of swords okay one last shuffle best message to close this reading please spirit for the weekend full moon in scorpio full moon in scorps Card number 34, hold your center. Okay. Here we go. Oh, wow. This is perfect already. Hoo Have you been rushing out to meet others, trying to bend or accommodate their needs at the expense of your own well-being and inner peace? Now you are to strengthen your own energy, your own boundaries, to find your ground, firmly place your feet there and do not move. Feel your feet anchoring you like a beautiful tree. Let yourself experience quiet certainty as you hold your center with commitment, courage, and consciousness. Wow, that's pretty on point. You are learning to trust in your own instincts, to take your own journey without comparison to the life path of another. There is no need to become disheartened or distracted by comparisons or judgments. The earth needs your light, which can only come from you. You will offer so much less if you try to make it match your beauty to what you, per you perceive to be the beauty of another. Many souls who are different and unique were not understood acknowledged or valued for whom they were as children <clears throat> instead they were encouraged to conform to change to be other than their true self in order to be loved and that could be part of that childhood trauma energy that i was picking up on this can be a hard pattern to break the devil ten of wands two of swords are we getting it i think so <laughs> 
Yet the time is here for you to love and honor yourself as yourself. You are beautiful. You do not need to change for another. You certainly do not need to change for the divine. You are being encouraged instead to distill your essence and to become even more of you. Hold your center now and do not be rattled by any other through intimidation, confrontation, doubt, jealousy, or fear. To quote, hold your center means to accept your innate value and worth, your right to exist and thrive and accept the love that created you as you in order to fulfill your divine destiny. This is a big message. I'm not finished reading yet, but this is a big message for masculine energies out there that need to really work on being more authentic. This has nothing to do with gender roles, okay? Your existence as a masculine energy has nothing to do with gender roles, just like your existence, someone's existence as a feminine energy has nothing to do with feminine, with, with, with gender roles. Yes, there are certain ways that we're going to vibe with it. There are certain ways, certain similarities that we're going to express, but everyone has the right to express themselves in their own way. How you embody masculine and feminine energy is unique to you and is meant to be expressed in a unique way, not the way someone else tells you to, all right? This oracle brings you confirmation. You are on the right path. You do not need to collapse into fear or doubt to ease old guilt or make others more comfortable. It is not selfish or, quote, hard of you to be strong. You can hold yourself in high esteem and be gentle and loving to others whilst absolutely refusing to accept any behavior, belief, or attitude of another that would tear you down or cast you into doubt or self-hatred. As part of your spiritual training, your soul learned to be open to receive guidance and channel healing. This is what you need to be able to do to function as a healer, channel, and light worker. You had to be sensitive receptive and open. Now is the time to balance that with resilience, strength, and even some divine stubbornness. Refusing to give up on who you are whilst remaining open to guidance is the balance of loving wisdom necessary to grow yourself as a divinely unique individual in a world that often fears true individuality, simply because it cannot be easily controlled. Holding your center doesn't mean you no longer surrender. Instead, you consciously choose to surrender into divine love and grow more empowered. You are here to shine a light, to be the lighthouse for others. The lighthouse doesn't ask for permission to shine. It stands still, shines faithfully, and those who need it are guided by its light to safety. Do not lose faith in yourself, beloved soul. You know who you are. Be strong. Honor your inner beauty and your personal boundaries. You need to feel safe in your ability to say no as much as you need to know what that you need to know that you will say yes when your heart guides you to do so. Be true to you. Beautiful message. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee. Monday morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah. Bye.